All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to get started making a fully automated trading bot in the NinjaTrader platform. So as some of you know, I've been building a few bots and I'm currently letting one of mine trade a funded account challenge right now with Elite Trader funding. We're currently about 90% of the way towards the $6,000 profit goal after running for a little over four weeks at this point. And if we hit that goal, we will secure a 100K funded account. More information on that in the description. I've been getting some questions about how to get started making bots in NinjaTrader. So here's what we're gonna be learning in this video. We're gonna be going over how to create a new strategy in NinjaTrader and unlock the code to be able to edit it. We're going to learn how to code out some pretty basic logic to determine when we should buy and sell. We're going to be able to fully automate our buy and sell orders. And I'm going to give a brief introduction to the NinjaTrader backtesting and optimization tools to show you how much time it can save you in the process of building successful bots. And ultimately, this is what we end up with for an optimized version of our strategy from the last one year of data on NASDAQ. So we're just going to start with something pretty simple using a moving average crossover to determine our entries, just so we can get comfortable with the basics of what I just mentioned. In future videos, we can expand on this and go into some more complex, you know, ICT concepts and stuff like that. But right now we're just focused on building that foundation, being able to build out some very basic logic and execute orders. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our NinjaTrader control center. You're going to click new and then strategy builder. We're going to be creating a new strategy here. So we're just going to click next, give it a name. Mine's just going to be YouTube crossover. I won't bother changing the description. I'm just going to click next. Our default properties, we don't need to change right now. So we can just click next. Additional data, same thing. We're not tweaking anything here. Click next. Inputs and variables we're actually going to add a couple here so you can do all this stuff in the code but this strategy builder just gives you a nice kind of ui to do all this stuff without having to touch the code so we're just going to do add and we're going to need a fast moving average length and a slow moving average length so i'm just going to do fast ma and give that a default value of nine and do the same thing for slow ma give it a default value of 21 for now just arbitrary numbers i'm going to go to next conditions and actions we don't need to touch right now this is pretty much ninja traders way of giving you this setup wizard and allowing you to define if this then that so if condition one happens you want to take a trade in this direction otherwise you want to close because of xyz reasons it just lets you do all this stuff without having to manually edit the code but we're going to be doing that all ourselves so we don't need to worry about this right now stops and targets same thing we don't need to worry about that i'm just going to click next and then finish so now what we need to do is actually open up another strategy builder window and you want to find the strategy you just created so mine was called yt crossover and I'm just going to click save as, and I'm going to call this YC crossover unlocked. And that's because we're actually unlocking the script to be able to edit the code. And you'll find out what that means in a second. So we're just going to go to next. Everything we made in the first script should remain the same. So our inputs and variables are here and that's all we created. So we can just proceed by going to unlock code. And when you click that, you get this warning that just lets you know, if you unlock the strategy, you can manually edit the code, but you won't be able to use this whole setup wizard here. Meaning the way we created our inputs from just clicking to add and doing stuff basically in this simple UI won't be accessible. Once we unlock this code, we're going to have to do that all manually, which is fine. Everything we need to do is pretty simple and can be done in the code. So we're just going to click yes. And now it should give you this ninja script editor. So I'm going to make mine a little bigger just so it's easier to see. So I'm right clicking and going to properties, text editor font, and I'm going to increase that to 16 or so. So without going into too much detail here, this on state change basically contains all your default parameters. So we're calculating everything on bar close. We have our inputs right here. And this on bar update is basically where we're going to have all of our logic that's going to run on every single bar. And if you expand this properties right here, you can see that this is where our inputs are. So if we wanted to add another one, we could just copy and paste and just give it another name and then scroll up here and give it a default value, same as these. But we don't need that right now, so I'm just going to delete that. So we can pretty much get started building out the logic. The first thing I want to do is check if we are in real trading hours. And for that, I'm going to be using 9.30 to 4 p.m. New York local time. So if you have some coding experience, you'll know it makes sense to assign that to a Boolean value. True or false, we are either in real trading hours or we're not. So I'll give this a new Boolean value and say market open. And the way we can access time in NinjaScript is by going to time zero. So this is the time of the zero with element or current index. But we're actually going to use this two time function that just makes it a little easier to process and just converts the time to a simple number. So we can say if time is greater than or equal to 930. So the first two digits are the hour, the next two are the minutes, the next two are seconds. So we need to be greater than 930 and also less than or equal to 4 p.m. So I want to check time zero again and make sure that's less than or equal to 16 o'clock. So to make sure this is actually working, we can try to enter and exit positions just based on real trading hours alone. So I'm just going to make this enter positions comment and I'll say if market open is true, we could just do enter long here. And this function is just native to NinjaTrader, so it'll just enter a long position at a market order. And then we can exit when we are not in real trading hours. So I'll make this exit positions. And if not market open, then we can just do exit long. And to make sure this is actually working, we can just do control S to save, right click, compile. 
Both those buttons are up here as well. And we should get that noise to tell us we're all good. And if we go to our chart, we can right click and go to strategies and make sure to go to the unlocked version that you created. Then you're gonna to wanna to check this enabled box and click apply. And now you should see that we are taking positions when the market opens and closing them on market close. And that should be the case for previous days as well, which seems to be the case. So we should be all good there. So now we can add our moving average criteria. So I'm going to make a moving average comment. And same thing as the market open, we want to basically indicate a true or false value based on whether our fast moving average is crossing above or below our slow moving average. So we can say bool cross above is equal to the cross above function. And then our inputs here are going to be our fast MA followed by our slow MA. And the last parameter here is just how far we need to look back to determine this. And we can just look back one bar. And I'm just going to copy and paste that for our cross below, change that function to cross below as well. And the rest of this can stay the same. We're still looking to see if the fast moving average is crossing below the slow moving average. So now that we have that logic, we would need to utilize it here when we're determining whether to enter positions. So we could say if market open, we want to enter this loop. And then we could say if cross above is true, then we want to enter long. Otherwise, if we are crossing below, we want to enter short. And if we save that and compile it again, so now if we go back to strategies, we can add our unlock strategy, make sure to click enabled. And when you click apply, you should see all these entries and exits popping up, but you can't see the moving averages. So you could just add indicators for each one, but if you were to change the settings of the strategy, then you would also have to change those indicators as well. So a better solution might just be to plot them from the script directly, which we can do pretty easily. So if we go back to the on state change and find our default input values, right below there, we can just do add plot, and I'll just make this green, so brushes.green, call it fast MA, and then do the same thing for the slow MA. And I'll just make it blue. So with this, this is gonna be stored as plots zero and value zero. And for slow MA, it's gonna be stored as plots one and values one. So when we're accessing these plots to be able to set the values, this is how we need to be getting them. So going down to the moving average part, we could just do values zero, and this will access our fast moving average. And we want to set the current value, so the zero with index, and that's going to be equal to the SMA function using our fast MA input as the length. But we need to be getting the zero with index of that as well. And then same thing for the slow moving average, but we need to access that by going to values one, and again the zero with element, SMA, slow moving average this time, and the zero with element of that as well. And again, getting the current index. So if we save that and compile again, looks like we have no errors, so we can go back to the chart. Right click strategies, remove what we had, add it back, and then enable and apply. And now we see those moving averages come up. So we can actually see why it's executing where it is. So we can see the fast moving average is crossing under the slow moving average, and thus we're taking a short position. And it's also important to understand that one of the default values, if you remember, um, was setting the calculations to be on bar close, which is why in this case, you see the fast moving average crosses above the slow right here but we don't know that to be true until this bar closes and we get the opening of this new one. Because if this closes back under here, then our fast moving average will also be back under the slow. But once we confirm that this is actually plotting above the slow moving average, then on the opening of the new candle is where we set our enter long and enter short. And just so you know, the current way we have it set up is just taking market orders. But one thing we can add here is just to convert to in 32, and then we're gonna say default quantity and add this empty string right here. And I'm just going to copy that and put it in the short as well. So I'm going to save and compile that. And what this does is it basically allows us to enter on a quantity defined when we set up the strategy in the first place. So you can see we're buying and closing one contract here. That's by default. But if we go to the strategy settings, and since we made that change, we're going to have to delete it and add it again. But at the very bottom, when you see order properties, there's a set order quantity that you can either have a strategy or default quantity. And if we set that to something like five and also click enabled again, we want to apply that. And now you can see we're buying and closing five contracts at a time. So that's pretty much it for the code. So now I want to go into the backtesting and optimization features. So you're going to go to new and then strategy analyzer. And you want to make sure the right strategy is selected here. So say I want to test this on MNQ, I'll do a 30 minute time frame, and I'll go back a year. I'll also include commissions and one tick slippage and go to run. And you can see this is how it would have performed over that time period. So not horrible, but not great. The equity curve is extremely unreliable, but that's where I want to introduce this optimization feature. So if you go to backtested type and click optimization instead of backtest, you can actually vary which parameters you're taking and the platform will simulate all the different outcomes and give you the best ones. 
So say if we wanted to vary our fast moving average from a value of five to something like 20 and just increment that by one. So it'll go through, you know, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. And for our slow moving average, we can increment that from 20 to I'll say 200. And I just want to increment that by 10. I don't care about incrementing by one, getting all that granular data. I'll just keep it on MNQ and dating back to a year. And the default is set to optimize on the max profit factor. So I'll just keep that for now. We have our commission set up, so I'll go to run. And then this is the result we get. So a pretty steady equity curve for the last year of data. Now, instead of max profit factor, there are many different ways to optimize what the quote unquote best results are. One thing I like to use is this R squared function, which essentially gives you the steadiest equity curve, meaning it's pretty much a straight line. You don't have too many fluctuations above and below. But if you can do that historically for a good period of time, then there's a chance that you might be able to see some continued steady growth in the future. But overall, I just want to point out that this optimization tool can really save you a lot of time, especially if you want to dig deep into this stuff. Because if you're building strategies and you have, you know, anywhere from five to 10 different parameters, and there's a bunch of ways that you could vary them, then doing that manually is going to be a nightmare and will take, you know, dozens, if not hundreds of hours. But if you just let this simulate all that work for you, then it'll only take a couple seconds or a couple minutes. And even if you have some super complex strategy and you're varying every single parameter, it still usually only takes about a few minutes for something not too intensive. But this is exactly how I used it to get the settings for my current bot to be running on the funded account challenge. So I think next time we can try to focus on some more complex logic, maybe dive into some ICT concepts, and we can try to optimize that too to see you know what time frame works best for whatever our logic is, what risk reward ratio works best and all that stuff. But I just wanted to make this a very bare bones, hit the ground running, just the absolute minimum that anyone could need to get started up. Just know how to unlock the strategy, build out a little bit of code, and then automate the orders. I do plan on doing more of these in the future, so if you have specifics of what you would like to see as far as, you know, strategy logic, feel free to let me know, and I'll try and do my best. I'm not going to do anything super complicated on here. We're going to try to keep it, you know, under a half hour to an hour, but I'm open to ideas. And uh, if you found this video helpful, please feel free to give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. That's all I had for today, and I'll see you in the next one.